So today I'm gonna to be pouring some epoxy. This is gonna be a big sliding barn door style door for a bakery. These are beach slabs. They got a lot of cool grain and checking and cracking in them. So I got it all formed up. It's four foot wide and seven foot tall. So it's pretty big. Leo's coming to help. So is Bo. So I got it on my fab table that's perfectly level. I got it formed up and taped. Hopefully I don't have any leaks. So I don't have a ton of experience with epoxy. So my buddy Ben's coming over to help and he has way more experience than me. He does really nice work. So he's gonna help me out. It's pretty thin. I think it's three quarters thick, seven eighths thick about right now, the slabs are. So we gotta clamp them down. You can see they're already trying to float up. So we gotta clamp them down really good before we pour. Hopefully because it's so big and thin, it doesn't warp and twist after it's poured. I'm gonna make a whole steel frame for the door around it. So that should stiffen it up. I'm a little worried. Last night it got really cold. It was like eight degrees and epoxy is pretty temperature sensitive. So I've had the fire, the wood stove ripping for a while and it's 70 degrees in here now, 18 outside. So for this epoxy, they say it's ideal between 70 and 74 degrees. So I'm just gonna have to keep watching the temperature in here. All right, so my buddy Ben's here. We're getting it clamped down tight. What's going on? Hopefully with his help, we don't screw up anything too bad. What kind of stuff do you do? I do a lot of epoxy tables. You know, I've been doing it for about three years or so. I mean, I know my way around it, so. Yeah, that'll help. I, I still get leaks here and there, but I've, I've learned a lot. So. A lot more experience than me. This should be good. This should be, this should be well. Yeah, he does nice work. What's your uh, what website or built, Instagram? Built by Ben Woodco. TikTok is built by Ben. Um, Instagram is built by Ben Woodco. And take a follow and look at my stuff. Yeah, check him out. It looks sweet. You started YouTube soon, so yeah, I'm working on it. All right, we're gonna get it clamped down and then get after it. Got it all clamped down the best we could. Don't think we have any parts floating still. Ben's over here starting to mix. We got enough for three gallons. So it's the deep pour, it's two to one. What brand? Super clear is the brand. Super clear, liquid glass, liquid gold. Yeah, it should be a good brand. Uh, so we have enough to do three gallons and we're just gonna mix it all. It's a three gallon kit, so just mix it all at once. So. That, that'll be easier um, to just mix it all. Hopefully we have enough. Eyeballing it, it should be about perfect. Maybe yeah. a little short, but it's all gonna settle underneath all the cracks. Right. So it's gonna be, you know, lose about eighth of an inch underneath, you know. Really deceiving. Uh, deceiving, really deceiving. So it's gonna be. We'll see. Yeah, here's the last part. We're gonna dye it black. So Ben's saying he likes doing the dye and the powder. Why is that? Just doing a little mix. Does better with, uh, instead of a solid black, you get some motion in there with some like pearl and some swirls. So yeah. It gives it more depth. Sweet. You 10 drops. Mm -hmm. Let's see if that goes. And a little 
I just eyeball up on them. Three gallons, so I might need a little bit. Start there, I can always add more. See what it looks like. Yeah. How long you mix it for usually? I usually listen to a full song while I'm mixing. <laughs> That's how I. <laughs> I gotcha. Start singing. Here. No, start singing a song. <laughs> so we're testing if we need to add more dye. We're thinking a little bit more. A little bit more dye, just to darken it up a little. Yeah. Bit. the amount just right. <laughs> so we got it all poured. We had just enough. It's a little low down here, but I think that'll come off anyways when I flatten it. So I'm gonna keep watching this pretty much all day, keep popping bubbles, making sure it's all good. And then I'll bring you guys back in a couple days when I strip it. Then I'm gonna flatten it, both sides, and then start building the frame for it. So it's three days later since we poured the epoxy. I wanted to give it at least three days to set up hard, especially because this is really thin. So I wanted it to give it the best chance to get as hard as possible. So we'll see what happens when I strip it. I hope it doesn't warp or have a memory or anything. So I'm gonna strip it and then get my router sled set up on this table and flatten both sides.
I didn't put these tape on these blocks too. Uh, you'd have a real hard time getting them off of the, the slab. They'd stick really good to the slab. So got to put that tape on there. I'm afraid this thing's gonna crack in half. It hasn't yet though. So that wasn't too bad. I was afraid I was gonna break it, but it looks pretty flat still. So now I'm gonna get rid of the rest of this form, and then I have a uh, router sled flattener set up for this table. I'll get that set up and start flattening this. So I got it all set up. I used a laser and I lasered in these rails so those are perfectly level. And then I did have to rip both ends of this slab um, just a little bit on each side because my maximum width I can flatten on this is four foot. So you can see the cutter head just barely reaches to both sides. This is definitely the biggest slab I've flattened on this. So, and I need exactly four foot wide for this door so it works out. Um, I got it, I just have it hot glued down. That usually works good for my slabs. I just glue them down, they're easy to get back up. So I'm gonna start taking passes off it. I wanna do as little as possible, but I gotta get down I gotta get down to where pretty much it's all flat, so we'll see how thick I can get. I got a three inch cutter head on here, so it should go relatively quick, but you gotta be careful because it's so big. So let me start cutting on it.
I got this side flattened for now. I may have to do another pass on it. As you can see, it's low right here, but it's not really low. So depending on, I'm gonna flip it over and depending on how much I have to take off the other side, I might be just leaving this and then sanding it down to get it flat. So there will be a little dip in there if I do that, but I'm not really worried about it being super flat because it's gonna be a door and I don't think anyone would see that little bit. And because I'm worried about the thickness, right now I'm at like, a, like five eighths thick. So depending on how much I gotta take off the bottom, I don't really wanna go much thinner than half inch. So we'll see how much the bottom needs. I may be flipping it back over and doing this other side um, to try to keep it at, at least half inch because I'm already worried about the uh, strength of it that thin. I am making a, a steel frame for it, but still try to keep it as thick as possible but it turned out pretty nice. As you can see, it exposed some spots where the epoxy didn't get, so I'll probably have to do another small pour in some of these cracks where it didn't fill. And the epoxy makes a big mess, as you can see. I've flattened a few epoxy slabs before. I gotta be careful, because this gets stuck in my dust collector. It's all stringy like that, and it'll wrap itself around the blades and the uh, dust collector will overheat because it's dragging all that stuff so I gotta watch that but let me flip it over here's the underside you can see where a bunch of air got trapped that's why it keeps kept bubbling up up through the top big air bubble there so I'm gonna glue this down and start flattening the side I got this other side flattened. There's this one low spot. It's probably a 16th inch deep. And I'm just gonna leave it because I'm already thinner than I would like to be. I'm probably 9 16ths thick. And it's not ideal, but it is what it is. The slabs I started with were probably 7 8 thick at the most. Um, but it is gonna be a door. So you don't want it super heavy. And I'm not that worried about it yet because I'm gonna be making a steel frame for it. So that's gonna take all the weight. It's gonna be hanging by that and everything. Um, I just have to be careful moving it around because it's so thin. And also this is gonna be the back side of the door. So it'll be kind of hidden behind the wall because this door is gonna be open most of the time. You, you would be able to see it when it's closed from the other room, but I'm gonna try to blend this in with a sander and I it probably you probably wouldn't even notice it. But like I said, 95% of the time, this door is gonna be open. So I'm more worried about the other side. But I think I'm gonna end this video here. In the next video, I'll build the frame for it and then get this where it's gotta be mounted before I finish this, I gotta do a whole bunch of sanding. I also, I'm gonna fill in the rest of these exposed cracks with epoxy too. And then it's gonna need a whole bunch of sanding and finishing, but before I finish it, I'm gonna get it mounted in the frame uh, where it's gotta be. So stay tuned for that one. Thanks for watching.